Welcome back. You're watching uh, PTV World, and this is a special transmission covering the extraordinary uh, meeting of uh, the foreign ministers of the Organization of Islamic Countries that is going to be held on Sunday, the 19th. Uh, for which a lot of dignitaries have already arrived. Some are arriving and some will be arriving. But of course, the important meet will be held on Sunday. There are also observer countries that are coming, including uh, observers, of course, representatives from the P5 countries, the United States, as well as the donor agencies. How important is this meeting? How will the countries be able to make uh, Afghanistan come out of this current crisis, the humanitarian and uh, this uh, economic crisis that it is plagued will. To talk more about that in the studios, we've been joined by Ambassador Masood Khan Saab. He's the former president of Azad Jammu in Kashmir as well. Thank you very much, Masood Saab, to have joined us. Masood Saab, uh, United Nations, OIC, all the other uh, donor agencies, they all understand the need to help Afghanistan in this dire straits that it is embroiled in. Why is this not happening sooner than later? We should celebrate that it's happening now. Mm. As a matter of fact, we are grateful to Saudi Arabia for taking this that initiative. And I think Pakistan has the honor to host this extraordinary session of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. So yes, you're right that it sh the initiative uh, should have been taken earlier. But now that it has been taken, let's generate momentum. Let's mobilize all our resources to make this session successful. And how can it be done? Well, <clears throat> by establishing a humanitarian corridor to Afghanistan. I mean, whenever there is a conflict situation in Afghanistan, uh, right now there is no conflict situation, but there is a humanitarian crisis. There is a looming humanitarian catastrophe. So in order to address that, and this has been predicted by the United Nations, by even United States, also European Union. Everybody knows from east to west that this catastrophe is going to be, this winter, the catastrophe, the humanitarian catastrophe in Afghanistan is going to be probably the worst in recent history. So it must be addressed. And therefore, I think that uh, uh, we have the resources. I mean, the uh, 57 countries of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation or the P5 countries that are joining or international financial institutions or Japan or Germany and other observer uh, states who are joining, they have the resources. Mm. And uh, I would uh, particularly mention uh, Islamic Development Bank and Islamic Solidarity Fund. Um, they can make a contribution. And as you know, the situation in Afghanistan is dire. Uh, the United Nations has said that uh, um, 23 million um, Afghans, which is half than, ha um, uh, more than half of the Afghan mm. population, mm. they are facing starvation or hunger or uh, a shelterless winter. So um, to address this catastrophe, it is important that uh, the organization of the Islamic cooperation itself, which has immense resources, I mean, they are rich countries, who are members of this organization, or the international financial institutions, they can step forward and help Afghanistan and the people of Afghanistan. Shah Mahmood Qureshi Sahib, our foreign minister, sir, says that any economic collapse in Afghanistan or mass exodus will not confine itself to the region, but will affect the entire world. Would you care to elaborate on that? Well, I would say that, you know, as far as we are concerned, Afghanistan is our next door neighbor. And uh, we have relationship of uh, kinship between Afghanistan and Pakistan. I mean, we have contiguous border. But more than that, um, we have this uh, friendship, this bond that is between the two nations. So anything that happens in Afghanistan will instantaneously affect Pakistan. I mean, let's be very clear about mm. it. And Central Asia and Iran and West Asia, the whole of West Asia. But it would also affect the uh, uh, the Western countries, I mean the European Union in particular, the Gulf region or the United States. Um, so we have to stem outflow of refugees, which is imminent as a matter of fact. I mean, I think uh, the foreign minister said yesterday that the Afghans have two choices, um, either they die of hunger or they migrate. Mm. Uh, so um, nobody wants to um, 
to open these floodgates of refugees moving across continents and countries. So I think that that's what he meant. All right. When uh, we talk, or the foreign minister talks of engaging the world as far as the, this current situation of Afghanistan is concerned, how much of that is realized? You talked about in the beginning of uh, realization by all the important countries and stakeholders of the current situation in Afghanistan. But why isn't that translating into action? A, because, I mean, a lot of people say it is because of the current uh, political system in Afghanistan that uh, have uh, that uh, countries in the West have certain differences with. But shouldn't these very countries kind of look away from that, at least for the time being, till the humanitarian or economic crisis is dealt with and then deal with the political issues that they have? You know, Pakistan has played a role of leadership uh, in bringing United States and Taliban on the negotiating Agreed. table. Then um, in helping with the evacuation in mid-August uh, 2021, this year. And uh, uh, after the precipitous withdrawal of the US and NATO troops, uh, Pakistan has been helping the people of Afghanistan in so many ways. Mm. Here, I mean, uh, in the region and also in the United Nations and multilateral institutions and also bilaterally with the United States. So this uh, mechanism which is called uh, Troika Plus mm. in which United States is also included. And uh, apparently there's going yes. to be another meet of that very soon so, after this meeting as well. Yes, th that's right. So uh, Pakistan has been acting as a catalyst mm. and um, a good faith facilitator uh, to stem this uh, humanitarian uh, crisis that we are seeing. Uh, so the other thing that you, the question that you asked, let me come to that. And the right. question is that uh, uh, the United States government, for instance, the Biden administration, they have the, uh, reservations about the Taliban, the kind of uh, um, governance, uh, they, governance they that, mm -hmm. uh, that they have mm -hmm. chosen or they, uh, they f uh, fear that the Taliban have chosen because you must have heard the statements from the Afghan uh, government, their spokesperson, that they are in fact uh, on the path of reformation. What well, they're doing is, it's, it's not the Taliban of the 1990s, mm. that they are recognizing rights of women and they want to have an inclusive polity, um, uh, which would of course give due representation to minorities, ethnic and religious minorities and so on. So the European Union and the United States have their um, apprehensions and they have expressed these apprehensions. They have conveyed these apprehensions to the Afghan Taliban uh, directly, mm. I think in Doha mm. and through other channels. Uh, also the European Union has uh, communicated these concerns to the Afghan government. Now here, I think that uh, you must have uh, read that letter which has been issued by former ambassadors and military commanders uh, of uh, the United States and they have, in fact, depicted the gravity of the situation. And they've alerted and uh, alerted the international community, the Biden administration, that yes, yes, probably your stand or stance in regard to the governance issues um, may be legitimate. But right now, the pressing priority is to help the people of uh, Afghanistan. And um, I think in that context, this extraordinary session is very important, both symbolically and substantively. Masood Khan Sam, do you feel that this aid for the Afghan people should come in the form of food, in the form of shelter, in the form of clothing, or in the form of money? What is the immediate need in your point of view? And what is, I mean, if you had to put a number on the different kinds of aid that needs to arrive to Afghanistan at the earliest, what should the priority be? Food, medicine, and shelter. All These right. are top priorities. But, uh, there are related priorities also. For instance, I mean, uh, uh, we all know that uh, some 40% of uh, Afghanistan GDP has been wiped out. Mm. Some 75% uh, of uh, Afghan budget has been eliminated. Mm. Uh, it has just evaporated. The banking so, system has almost collapsed. Yes, and I mean, there are um, other dire um, uh, predictions mm. of mm. universal poverty in Afghanistan mm. because uh, the WFP says that only um, uh, less than 5% people would be able to afford food. Um, they would be able to eat and 
may be below. I mean, the UNDP has said that 97% mm. percent of the Afghan population. The UNDP could be is even more excessive can, as far it as. It could be below the poverty line, which mm. means universal mm. poverty. Mm. This, this terminology is being used. So I think that uh, the financial system in Afghanistan has to be restored. The banking system also, I mean, uh, it would be um, not an act of charity. I would say that, uh, or not an act of magnanimity, but I think it's an obligation to release Afghan funds. Uh, the funds of the Afghan Central Bank mm. and the, the funds which have been frozen. Mm. Uh, um, because, uh, let me say that uh, in the West, uh, in the United States, North, Northern America, North America or Europe, this is Christmas season. Of course. This is a uh, season of giving. Mm. Um, now, uh, the people of Afghanistan uh, are uh, passing through a very dire mm. uh, situation. Mm. And they're the ones who, um, uh, as one of the Afghan spokespersons, Afghan foreign minister the other day in an interview said, he appealed uh, to the international community to demonstrate mercy and compassion. Mm. And he said that the United States is a big country, it's a great country, uh, and therefore uh, it should also um, try to help out the people of Afghanistan. They've also given these assurances that they would uh, ensure the rights of the uh, Afghan women are protected. And uh, uh, Pakistan is not acting as an apologist mm. for Afghanistan. Sure. What we're trying to do here is, and I think that mm, uh, we should give uh, credit to the leadership of Pakistan, that uh, Pakistan and the state of Pakistan, mm. which has been constantly trying to help uh, the people of Afghanistan mm, out of this crisis. Mm. So I think that uh, I hope that our voice would be heard, uh, the Afghan uh, peoples, uh, appeals to the West would uh, um, have an impact. Let me tell you that uh, uh, even after the evacuation that took place, after August the 15, the entire nation, the entire 40 million population has not migrated. Hmm. These are the same Afghan people uh, who were being governed by the previous regime hmm. and the um, uh, the NATO alliance and the United States-led uh, coalition was here in the region to protect this population, to safeguard their interests. That nation is still there. Mm. Only a fraction of that population has left. Mm. So their children, their elderly, the women who need attention, who need uh, these, uh, whose, whose basic needs mm. need to be fulfilled. Exactly, and at the earliest, sir. At the earliest, mm. because the winter in Afghanistan is very, very harsh. Mm. And it, it can kill people. And we mustn't forget that uh, for the past uh, 40 years, Afghanistan has undergone several cycles of wars and uh, drought and civil war and uh, war against terrorism. So this, uh, uh, um, this region driven by strife is now coming out of, of, that, of that conflictual situation, a perennial conflictual situation. Mm. And I think that um, here it is the responsibility of the international community because after all, when we say international community, we're talking about an international family. We mm. are family mm. and Afghans are not on another planet. Exactly. They are part of that family and the rest of the family needs to understand that and act before it's too late. Thank you very much, Ambassador Masood Khan Saab, former president of the Azad Jammu in Kashmir, to have come all the way to our studios and to have talked exclusively to us about this extraordinary meeting on Afghanistan and Pakistan's efforts and what needs to be done by the entire world. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. much. We've been joined uh, online by Tahmina Janjua Saiba. She's a former Foreign Secretary. Tahmina Janjua Saiba, thank you very much to have joined us. You must have heard what I've been talking to Ambassador Masood Khan Saab. Uh, how important is the pledge by all the different countries across the world as far as the desire to help Pakistan, uh, Afghanistan is concerned, especially by the Islamic countries, the members of the OIC. Uh, it is significant, it's important. It's important, and as Ambassador Masood Khan said, it is important 
but the urgency of it has to be underlined. And I think that is something that will be underlined on the 19th when the foreign ministers of the OIC will meet in Islamabad. Um, the situation is grave. Uh, as it's been said, the country is facing a food crisis, is facing an economic meltdown, uh, is facing the complete closure of, of its banking sector, hence liquidity is not available to the people. There have been some actions that have been taken by members of the international community to support uh, the Afghan people. But let's not forget that it is the Afghan people that are at this point the, face the brunt of the problem that is now in, in Afghanistan, the drought, COVID-19, and the oncoming onslaught of the winter has made the situation even worse. So this, is, this was a situation that was in the making. And let's not forget that before that, it was uh, the, the finances that were provided by the Americans, by NATO countries, by other countries, were the ones that were running the country. With all of that being taken away, the people of Afghanistan face an economic meltdown. And more urgent to that is the complete uh, disaster that is awaiting, i.e. a crisis uh, that, uh, according to the UN um, Special Envoy uh, of the UN Secretary General, it is, we are witnessing a catastrophe in the making. So it's this catastrophe has to be somehow arrested and turned back. And therefore, the, the meeting of the OIC uh, foreign ministers will be essential, not only for a discussion on the current situation, but on taking certain decisions on what the OIC can do to help the Afghan people. Afghanistan, as you know, is one of the founding members of the OIC as well. Afghanistan deserves, the people of Afghanistan deserve the attention of the international community at this difficult time. Uh, as Ambassador Masood Khan said, the people of Afghanistan who are, who are who were left behind. There were only a fraction of those who left the country. But of the 38 million people, around 22.8 million people face crisis levels of hunger. And there are 3.2 million children at the risk of acute mal malnutrition. So we will see death, destruction, and misery until and unless uh, proper us. action is not taken at the right time, ma'am Janjua, Absolutely. that is so, so important. And thank you very much for highlighting it. Kindly stay on with us. We've been joined in the studios by Dr. Farah Nas. Uh, she's the assistant professor at NAS and also a foreign affairs expert and a regular guest on our shows. Thank you very much, Farah, to have joined us. Farah, uh, the world understands what is happening in Afghanistan. The OIC countries understand what is happening in Afghanistan. Pakistan has been pledging again and again, highlighting the situation in Afghanistan since the last couple of months. It was also instrumental to bring the Taliban and the government together uh, before the Afghan Taliban uh, took over uh, as the new uh, rulers of Afghanistan. Does the world understand what Afghanistan is going through and what is going to happen if necessary action is not taken? And if so, why hasn't the money till now? I mean, we are, Pakistan is doing so such a lot and this extraordinary meeting, of course, is part in that and I hope that something really comes out of it. Nevertheless, why before that nothing has happened? I think they have some hidden agenda that I am emphasizing on in my writing pieces that they are watching children getting affected with all this malnutrition and the shortage of food and the, the, the lack of medicines that they are facing in, Af in Kabul and in Afghanistan altogether, if still they are not paying attention to it, so they are really up to something else. Maybe they want the population, the 38 million population in Af of Afghanistan to suffer not only from famine, uh, shortage of food and all those other issues associated to the lack of resources, both financial and physical. So they are the Western societies, they are up to something where they demand and they uh, ask the Taliban to do this and that for women, they, 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 to do this and that for children. But they are not realizing the fact. They are not getting sensitive to what actually is happening in Afghanistan. And I think uh, it's not sooner, if I could say the sooner the better, it's still very late. The, mm. Like one in three children are really suffering from malnutrition. 
there is no medicine available for the pregnant women there. There is no medic medical facilities available to all those people who are suffering from regular diseases and problems. They are not realizing it. They are not getting themselves and putting themselves in their situation or in their shoes. So if they are not doing it, why? What mm -hmm. for? This mm -hmm. is what the world has to realize. Mm -hmm. And I think in this situation, meeting of the OIC here in Islamabad is, is really crucial. And I think they should introduce certain emergency measures through which to not... Financial measures. Of course, mm. financial measures. Because we have seen, like, after leaving off or the withdrawal of the United States, that what sort of economic arrangements they had in place in Afghanistan beforehand, right? So once they left, we found out that bulk of their financial support was based on either financial assistance or grant from overseas. And I think there is like in economic terms, there is like the, 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 the theory of consumption and income production. Mm -hmm. That completely explains what really happened to Afghanistan and its people. It's not like, of course, they are the $9 billion asset that belongs to the people of Afghanistan. It is frozen in, in the United mm -hmm. States. But what really happened in Afghanistan? When there was a consumption in Afghanistan where the contractors, the all high salaried people, were stationed in Afghanistan and working for the for the United States and mm. its allied forces, they were highly paid there. So they were spending the same money in Afghanistan one way or the other. Mm. So there was an income generation at the same time and the consumption was also higher. So when they left, there's a gap. And there's a gap in the financial assets which like from the foreign grants and foreign assistance as well. All right. There is a gap in the foreign assistance. Uh, there is a gap also, as you also said, Tahmina Janjua Saiba, about uh, the issues that uh, Afghanistan was being ruled through the aid that was being given by the NATO countries, by other uh, countries as well. And now that they are gone, that there is this lacuna that needs to be filled very quickly before it is too late. And of course, as uh, Dr. Farhan has also said, it, in her point of view, is already late. What I need to understand from you, Ma'am Janjua, is why did the world not react uh, sooner? I mean, why wasn't this aid maybe arriving in Afghanistan maybe a two weeks back or a month back? Why do we have to consistently, persistently tell the world what Afghanistan is plagued with? The reality yeah. is that there's a, the an international community or the Western world if that has been was providing all the resources, most of the resources of Afghanistan, uh, did not uh, like the government that came into power in Afghanistan, and hence were not willing to look at the situation closely. Uh, the UN, uh, the UN uh, Emergency Coordinator, Martin Griffith, uh, the UNDP, all, all the parts of the UN, and, the interna and all the international humanitarian community, we're all underscoring the fact that the situation is in a very difficult is very difficult, and as to quote um, to quote Martin Griffith, the UN Special Coordinator, Emergency Coordinator, Afghanistan was is in free fall, and it has become obviously the onslaught of winter propelled the situation. Though so yes, there was uh, the, the the Taliban came into power in Afghanistan on the fifteenth of August. From the 15th of August to now, in the middle of December, there has been much time that has been lost for the people of Afghanistan. And at this point, the most important thing is that we must underscore that the, the conference that is being held is focuses on the people of Afghanistan, the humanitarian needs, the, the, the health needs, the food needs of the people of Afghanistan. Mm. This is let's, so let's not get into politics. And this meeting comes, therefore, whatever decisions will be taken here will be extremely helpful in further generating the support of the international community. You may have seen in the last few days, there has been some, um, some change of heart in some parts of the world. For example, Netherlands and Germany have said that they will provide funds for, uh, pay, for, for payment of, of uh, teachers and uh, health workers pays. Now these are areas that were that had been the the government of in Afghanistan right now had been trying to underscore as well. There has been a release of 480 
million uh, dollars by the IMF, uh, sorry, by the World Bank, 280 million dollars by the World Bank as well. So there is a trickle that is now coming in. But the more important thing is that to arrest the situation, to stop it from the humanitarian catastrophe that everyone is talking about, there is need for urgency. And that urgency can happen, hopefully, with this, uh, the Islamic world coming up, making very strong recommendations about uh, the, the banking sector, about provision of food security, about provision. And, and let's not forget that Pakistan has played a very important role in reaching out to the people of Afghanistan. Pakistan has itself provided humanitarian assistance worth about $30 million. In addition, it's also provided the aid, air and road link for humanitarian assistance for UN agencies that are trying to apply humanitarian assistance for the people of Afghanistan. So Pakistan has been extremely conscious and as a result of our diplomatic efforts and also the uh, the support, uh, the, the idea being proposed also by, by Saudi Arabia, the conference is going to be held. Let us hope this conference takes into account the urgency of the matter. They, it, uh, it has taken into account the urgency of the matter, but let us hope that the international community would be able to pick up uh, from here and will be able to, to underscore the fact that this is not a time to waste and the people of Afghanistan are the sufferers at the end of the day. Ma'am, this is not a time to waste. Before I return to Dr. Farnas, I'd like to understand another aspect of it all. You understand diplomacy much better than a lot of us do. If a pledge, a proper pledge is taken as far as financial or humanitarian or economic aid to Afghanistan is taken at the end of this OIC mood, how long do you feel will it take for that pledge to be translated into action for that aid to eventually reach Afghanistan? Do you feel there, uh, there this lapse of time could be further reduced? You see, one has to understand that the, the conference that is going to be being held on the 19th is not a pledging conference. Mm -hmm. The nature of a pledging conference is completely different, where all, all your right. financial people come in and say, we give this much, we give this much, we give. That kind of announcements, I don't think will be coming publicly. But you will have international financial institutions that will be there, the P5 that will be there, the most uh, the financially in, uh, endowed uh, OIC countries that will be there. There will be others there, Germany. Islamic Africa Development Jones Bank is going to be there, ma'am. Islamic Development Bank will be there. That's what I said, international financial institutions mm -hmm. will be there. So all of that will help in, uh, in bringing together some kind of a package because the humanitarian appeal as I said, this is not a pledging conference, hmm. but the important thing is that when the political messaging goes out, then the time lapse between sending the resources and the, the, to Afghanistan may be reduced. Yes, All it right. takes a while. I mean, hmm. in, I have seen lots of pledging conferences in the, in the UN where people make pledges, but they never come through. So the important thing is that we can do something, are able to find a way where the international community can come through on, on providing the kind of humanitarian assistance that is immediately required. All right. Dr. Farah Nas, uh, uh, as uh, Tehmina Janjua Sahib also pointed out, that uh, this is uh, nevertheless not a pledging conference, but a, a lot of aid could come out as a result of this for uh, uh, for Afghanistan and a lot of important countries are there, the OIC countries are there, the P5 countries are there, the donor agencies uh, will be there, their representatives will be there. When it comes to Afghanistan, we are also going to have the interim foreign minister and his delegation that is going to be there. All of these people together forms a very important block of nations. Mm -hmm. Do you feel all misunderstandings that might exist between Afghanistan and certain other states could also be thwarted during this? I think this is... Or on the sidelines, maybe? Yeah, it's a good opportunity to overcome all the differences. When I look at all the Muslim states and the Afghanistan situation and the people of Afghanistan at this stage, I would say Pakistan was doing something that it could do in these four months of the Taliban uh, regime and the, their government. What were the other states doing? 
what sort of contributions they were putting forward to not bring people of Afghanistan in this catastrophic situation where they are now. So whenever there is a flood, there is emergency followed. Whenever there is an earthquake, there is an emergency followed. So Afghanistan is in the same situation. I think the all blocks, all states, all groups, they have to unite, no matter what grievances they hold against Taliban or anyone. It's not as Madam Dhamina just mentioned, it's not the time to play politics. It's the time to save humanity. If there is no human beings left in Afghanistan, what sort of politics all these regional and powerful states can play in, in this uh, uh, soil and, and in Afghanistan altogether? So I think by coming closer, by working closer, it will provide larger avenues to the Kabul government and other states to work together. And I think it's like you were also asking uh, Madam Dehmina about how to overcome the, like to, to prosecute the entire process mm. of extending their help and Reduce support. Reduce the lapse yeah. between the pledges, of course, the, the, the yeah. decisions taken and the disbursement of aid. Yeah, so in that situation, I think in this meeting of all these powerful states, their foreign ministers going to be here sooner. So they have to execute a plan and how to go about it, to prioritize what's what is very important, what is less important, and what could be done later. So prioritizing everything is really crucial because saving mankind is really important. Extending support to the, to the needy in this point in time is very, very important, and it's on emergency measures. So for them, I think setting out different committees together, then extending support there in, in Afghanistan, sending people how to help and, and, and rescue in this situation is important. At the same time, they have to train different people from Afghanistan in, in, in their own countries and give them the basic skills that are required. Because unfortunately, all the professionals, whoever were there in Afghanistan, they tried to leave. So there's a gap. So to overcome that, I think at this stage, working closely with the Taliban, because the issue ultimately is leading towards a catastrophic situation for the Afghan population. Mm. We cannot let it happen. Unfortunately, separating politics from this situation is difficult as well, because we have to overcome all these barriers. So for that, I think to, it's my understanding that they have to train people from Afghanistan in, in their own places, the OIC member states, in their own countries, and sending them back to Afghanistan to help support the people there. Mm. Um, at the same time, on the Taliban's front, they also have to show some sort of you know, uh, supportive attitude towards their own people. It's ultimately their people, right? Afghanistan belongs to Afghan, and Taliban government belongs to the people of Afghanistan. So they have to provide certain kind of incentives to its own people that if you help and support us here, this is what we do for you. So it's like a two-way approach. And I think if only other states are offering, but their own government is not capable enough to do something for them, I think the problem is not going to be solved. It is very getting very, very complex. And, and I think whatever we see from here, it is much more challenging there mm -hmm. on the ground. In this complex and challenging scenario, Tahmina Janjua Saiba, how important do you feel has been Pakistan's role diplomatically to uh, make the world cognizant of what Afghanistan is going through? Well, Pakistan has been speaking wherever the foreign minister, uh, I understand, has been speaking to the world, to his colleagues, about the situation in Afghanistan, about the political situation in Afghanistan as well. So Pakistan has to, trip, as, as uh, has been said publicly, that Pakistan is no spokesperson of the Taliban government. But Pakistan feels very strongly about the situation that the people of Afghanistan are facing. And it's important for the peace, for the security of, the, the, of peace and security in the region, that there should be some kind of an understanding with that that is created between the world and the government, those who govern Afghanistan right now. The most important thing is that at this point we cannot we cannot uh, have a, a change in in government considering the situation in Afghanistan, and therefore it's important because the people of Afghanistan are the ones that need attention. The people of Afghanistan are the ones who are suffering at this point. 
and we have to save these these our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan from a humanitarian situation that 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 looks like it could be very very difficult and as Martin Griffith said it's it's the country the entire situation is in free fall speaking to the UN Gender Security Council the special representative of the secretary general on um, to Afghanistan also underscored that this catastrophe needs to be arrested so that is what Pakistan has been trying to do. That is what Pakistan in getting the conference here is trying to do. It will provide, the conference will provide an opportunity to the acting uh, foreign minister of Afghanistan also to speak to, um, to speak to other members of the UIC and to explain their own position. And, and also it is important. The, P5, the representatives of the P5 countries at the same time. Yeah, there, there will be special representatives of the P5 countries will be there as well. There'll be representatives from other countries as well. So it is it provides a platform for everyone to understand and understand the situation in Afghanistan and try to prevent the current situation from further deteriorating. So Pakistan has provided that platform for all members of the OIC, for the PFP five countries, for international financial institutions, for all who are going to be there at the conference, an opportunity to examine the situa situation in Afghanistan, an opportunity to see how the people of Afghanistan can be helped at this very difficult time. All right. Uh, uh, Dr. Farah Naz, opportunity opportunism these are two very important words but a lot of times these are used in the wrong context or not used at all in the case of afghanistan and with pakistan's efforts that are reaping fruit through this extraordinary meeting of the oic do you uh, feel as uh, as uh, judging what is going on across the world that uh, certain concrete attention would be placed on Afghanistan post this OIC meeting, at least by the Islamic countries? I think we should remain hopeful uh, because if after their meeting, all these member states are meeting in Islamabad after 41 years of time, mm -hmm. they met once, like in Islamabad, they met when the Soviet war happened. Mm. Something big happened, now again something big happened. Mm. And again in Afghanistan. And again Afghanistan, same mm. situation, same mm. trouble, mm. same problems. So they're meeting after 41 years here on the same subject. That shows that they really want to help support people. And the issue is not only Afghanistan, it's people, it's leadership problems. The problem is the economic security of the region, the secure, overall security of this region. So I would say it's not only the, these OIC member states who will, who will try and extend their support to help and rescue the Afghan population at this juncture, but it's the regional states as well. Who will not fail Afghanistan and, and leave them in, in, in getting into this kind of misery for, um, for, for the rest of their, for their lives and term. Mm. So they have to, sh to do something. I think like it's not something that they, they just wish for and is going to happen. But all these OIC member states, they have to pull together and then extend support. And as I mentioned earlier, they have to prioritize what should be done first. So I think economic prosperity is at the heart of all these issues. Mm. If they don't have, and I was just speaking to one of my colleagues this morning, and I was mentioning that the money that belongs to the Afghan population, which, which lies in America, this $9 billion, mm. it is their dry fruit money. Mm. And if this dry fruit money is not coming back to its own people, what they are going to do? Of course, they have to change their way of earnings and they have to concentrate more on the poppy industry. Mm. Who is pushing them to it? Mm. So is the West in the US preparing them to rely on something else if they survive based mm. on that? But I think uh, based on their uh, entire situation, the regional states will not let them fail mm. and they will help and support them for their own benefits, the mm. security and economic prosperity All of the right. region. Damina Jinjua Saiba, my last question to you. 41 years since uh, uh, the, all the countries got together to talk about Afghanistan since 1980 and of course now we are 2021. 
has much of Afghanistan changed in these last four decades or do you feel that the major issues that confronted Afghanistan way back then are the same that it is confronted with right now? Let me clarify one thing. Uh, this thing about the world, the international community or the OIC getting together, uh, talking about Afghanistan of after 41 years. Yes, an extraordinary meeting is, has, is taking place. Mm. But the OIC has been seized of the situation in Afghanistan during all these years. There have been resolutions adopted by the OIC. There have been resolutions that have been presented by by OIC countries in the OI, in the UN as well. So the OIC has been seized of the of the situation in Afghanistan, of the situation in Afghanistan of a member state. And uh, so that's one point. The second point is that the, the reason why the, the OIC is now collected here is because it will now be collecting care on, on Sunday is because the situation of, at the humanitarian, at the human level is extremely, extremely worrying. To the extent that uh, you may have also read about it, and I don't know if Masood Khan Sab also referred to it earlier, there are a number of former ambassadors and military yes, personnel they, who have served huge paper talking about yeah. and of course uh, asking the US administration to do something before it's too late. Yes, and that is why, and they say that the United States has a reputational interest and a moral obligation in rigorously joining other efforts to help the Afghan people. That is what we hope to expect to come out of this conference, that there will be a, a moral obligation that the OIC countries and, lay, and soon the world will be able to own up to in trying to in, in joining efforts to help the Afghan people. So that is what we hope that we'll, we'll be arriving at. There may be some comments, as I said, there may not be any uh, pledges that may be made, but it's possible that some countries may say that we've given this much, we are doing this. Because you can see now yesterday, uh, today I think I read where, this, where Saudi Arabia has sent a plane load of stuff from Pakistan, through Pakistan to Afghanistan. So Pakistan is providing an airlift situation, is also providing land of the possibilities for taking uh, for foodstuffs and for taking emergency humanitarian assistance goods through Pakistan. So Pakistan is playing a very important role in trying to address a situation that affects the people of Afghanistan we are not we are not playing politics here we are saying whoever is in need at this humanity at this situation pakistan will support the people of afghanistan in this terrible situation that is prevailing there and that is uh, and uh, things have deteriorated over the years when the americans when the americans the nato countries were there there was a large amount of money that was spent every year by them so the situation had become much better. But as soon as they pulled out, they pulled out all their money, they pulled out all their resources and left the Afghan people in a very difficult situation to the extent that, as uh, Maria was saying earlier, that $9.5 right. billion. Of course. Of and let, let's hope, Tehmina Janjua Saiba, that something really tangible comes out of this uh, because uh, desperate uh, times need and call for desperate measures. Thank you very much, Naimina Janjua Saiba. Over to you, and finally, uh, uh, Dr. Faranaz, uh, as I said, desperate times uh, call for desperate measures. Desper this desperation that uh, Afghanistan is currently facing, uh, do you feel that it will still be facing this in a couple of weeks' time, or do you feel that really the world has understood, and that is why the OIC are getting together, and that is why uh, they will collectively do something to uh, 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 prevent Afghanistan from further free-falling, as Amina Jinjua Saiba said. Well, I think um, Taliban have, you know, requested a mercy appeal, sort of, to mm. the West, that they really are going through tough times, and they are in a desperate situation because their people are dying. Mm. I think it should be the other way around because they win the situation. It's mm. not like they're the losers. Mm. But 
it's, it's, I said, as I say always, that I think the world is rewriting its history mm. and things are really going to be in a different manner and talked about in a different fashion in the future mm. where who wins and who lose, mm. they have to decide. Even the loser is going to decide mm. the rules and regulations for the winner. So mm. it's a very difficult and different situation that we have never witnessed in the history, mm. right? So if they will be the same in, in a couple of weeks or months, and that's probably, that's why that now the world is realizing, the world has not realized it, right? OIC has reached out based on the, you know, the numbers that are coming up. And they, what sort of support they will be able to extend, we hope so, that they should mm. be able to provide some sort of support. But what should they should be able to do it, I think we will be more clear by the end of Sunday. Mm. Uh, but before that, I think in the past 20 years, very negative stuff also happened. And I think among all of that is the economic situation of, of Afghanistan. Certain positive things also happened, like the infrastructure development, more universities, more hospitals, this and that. Well, what can they do with those empty buildings now, mm. where no one is there to, there to serve the population, mm. where no one is there to teach them, no one is there to treat them. Mm. They don't have the financial resources. They don't have the mechanism to run the system. So what America has done to them? A complete collapse on mm. every side of the Afghan sectors. I think, oh, I see. Let's hope and let's pray that they do something for the Afghan population. Inshallah, they will. Yeah. Inshallah, they will. Let's. Uh, we remain optimistic and we laud Pakistan's efforts. And it is because of those very efforts that the OIC is now getting uh, together here. After and 41 we'll years, we After should never 40, forget of that. Of course, and this is to talk about Afghanistan. Yeah. Dr. Farah Nas uh, said that uh, the world is rewriting history, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hope that uh, following this OIC extraordinary meeting of the foreign ministers, uh, that the world will be rewriting history for the benefit of countries such as Afghanistan. We hope that, we pray for that. Dr. Faranas, thank you very much to have joined us. And uh, with that, we come to an end of this part of the transmission. It's time for uh, news. And then, of course, we'll continue with this transmission after that. We want peace in Afghanistan. We want the economic situation that Afghanistan is plagued with to end and end at the earliest. Pakistan has been pledging for that. And Pakistan will continue to do that till Afghanistan becomes stable. Allah Hafiz.